In a tiny rural town in the state of Montana, a family of Swedish immigrants homesteaded amongst the Salish, Kootenai, and Ponderai tribes. In this vast valley, surrounded on all sides by mountains, Bernard Sherman Clusen was born and raised with 12 older siblings who spoiled him with attention and love. In this expansive terrain, far from any town with even a thousand people, the family passed on values of hard work, education, and service. It was important to the Clusen family to be a good neighbor, friend, Montanan, and American. Regularly, neighbors, strangers, or members of the tribe were welcome to share in the family meal. Clusen's nephew, recounted his grandfather, would just ask his wife to add a few more beans to the pot. The family knew what it meant to sacrifice for their country. Four brothers and a sister served in the United States military in both World War I and in World War II. Major Bernard Clusen, the youngest of the family, was killed in action over the immense Pacific Ocean, far from his beautiful family homestead. As he grew up, it became clear that Major Clusen was a star. The local newspaper, the Sanders County Ledger, often featured him in articles for his accomplishments. As a large family, the Clusens often struggled with money and feeding them all. Clusen easily solved this by starting a turkey farm. He provided both an income and a source of money for the rest of his family. Later, he won $5 for a poultry contest in second place. This kind of innovation and determination helped him later in his life. In high school, he set records in track and played a star role in his basketball and football teams. These later earned him a college scholarship. His future was bright, and he went on to Montana State College for an education that he and his family valued. He started on the football team as a guard and helped put an end to the 10-year losing streak. Clusen's All-American team of 1941 were later referred to as the Golden Ghosts because 11 of the 14 starters were killed in World War II. A couple years into college, in 1941, Clusen enlisted in the military in the U.S. Naval Reserve as an aviation cadet for the Marine Corps. The first three years of his military career were spent all over the United States ferrying goods and war supplies to and from other camps. He loved flying, but frequently wrote home to his father, saying how unnerving it was to fly over the Rocky Mountains with nowhere to land. Before he departed to the Pacific Theater, Clusen served as a poster child for the Marine Corps. He personified the ideal, gifted young man escaping a shut-in town to explore the world and to serve his country. He appeared on the cover of the New York Times Magazine and in a military re recruitment ad in the Saturday Evening Post. After three years of being used to transport cargo, Clusen transferred to the Pacific War Theater in 1944. As part of the 4th Marine Base Defense Aircraft Wing, he participated in bombing and strafing missions to ensure the atolls and islands of the Pacific stayed in American hands. The Marines had a tough time staying on the island with little supplies and performing cleanup duty as the island hopping campaign progressed to points closer to Japan. Throughout his piloting career, Clusen always stayed true to his home in Montana and wore his cowboy boots even when he flew. He went so far as to file down the heel to make them easier to fly in. In July of 1944, Clusen achieved the rank of Major and wrote to his brother stationed in Australia that he would just fly over and celebrate. Four months later, Major Clusen participated in his final battle over Image Island in the Jaluit Atoll. Two days later, on October 8, 1944, Major Clusen led his squadron into a storm. He turned sharply and went down straight into the ocean, somewhere near a Linglap Lap Atoll. The report from his wingman and best friend, Lieutenant Crawford, said, Clusen was in a climbing turn to the right two minutes after entering the front. He immediately fell off to the left and went down on his back. His squadron made an immediate search of the area that lasted for two weeks. They found nothing. He wasn't declared dead until two years later, after all the prisoner of war camps were searched and it could be confirmed that he wasn't hiding out on an island somewhere. The Clusen family was devastated. Bernard had always been an outstanding athlete and resilient from living off the land. Their charismatic golden boy could not have been killed by something as simple as a bad storm. After his father realized his boy would never be coming home, he wrote a letter to the Commandant of the Marine Corps just to make sure his son hadn't died alone and that he had been happy. 
Major Clusen met the end of his life on a landscape as open and expansive as the home he loved so much. But he died thousands of miles away from the mountains and the land and the family that made him who he was. Thank you.